Thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for caring about election integrity. I wanted to uh, start by showing a, uh, a bit of a video that I saw on MSNBC that concerns me, uh, and it showed a lot of what I want to uh, speak about. Mitch McConnell is a Russian asset. Those are the scathing first lines of a column by The Washington Post's Dana Milbank today. He goes on to write, quote, This doesn't mean he's a spy, but neither is it a flip accusation. Russia attacked our country in 2016. It is attacking us today. Its attacks will intensify in 2020. Yet each time we try to raise our defenses and repel the attack, McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, blocks us from defending ourselves. Let's call this what it is, unpatriotic. The Kentucky Republican is, arguably more than any other American, doing Russian President Vladimir Putin's bidding. McConnell, who's now been tagged as Moscow Mitch, is ignoring the warnings of Robert Mueller and from his own intelligence committee regarding Russia's continuing interference in our elections. The report from the bipartisan Senate Intelligence Committee, led by Republican Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina, found that Russia targeted election systems in all 50 states in 2016, and that little has been done to prevent it from happening all over again. That's exactly what Robert Mueller told the House Intelligence Committee on Wednesday. In your investigation, did you think that this was a single attempt by the Russians to get involved in our election, or did you find evidence to suggest they'll try to do this again? No, oh, it wasn't a single attempt. Uh, they're doing it as we sit here, and they expect to do it uh, 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 during the, the next campaign. They're doing it as we sit here. McConnell, who clearly wants Donald Trump reelected by any means necessary, blocked two election security bills. One bill would have required the use of paper ballots. The other would have required campaigns and candidates to report offers of election related aid from foreign governments. Coincidentally, I'm, I'm certain. Earlier this year, Mitch McConnell received a slew of donations from four of the top voting machine lobbyists in the country. Voting machine companies are not currently subject to any federally mandated security standards, and Mitch McConnell is helping to keep it that way. Joining us now is Evan McMullen, a former CIA operative and former independent presidential candidate. He's the co-founder of Stand Up Republic, and Michael Weiss, a columnist for The Daily Beast and author of a forthcoming book on Russia's military intelligence agency. Thank you both for being here. Evan, you. you ran for president. Uh, you worked uh, for the CIA in the past. Uh, you have served your country in, in that regard. Do you agree with Dana Milbank that Mitch McConnell is now essentially aiding Moscow in their future attacks that are already happening on our elections? I do agree that he is. I mean, obviously, Dana uses very explosive language there uh, when he says asset, which is a technical term for someone who is under the influence or even control of a foreign power. So for me, that's, a, you know, that's a, using that word is, is, is uh, you know, I would use it more, more technically than that. But I understand his point, and certainly Mitch McConnell is blocking efforts to secure our democracy when it faces greater threats than it ever has. And it's, it's inexplicable, but for any good reason why he would do this. The country's clearly under threat. The freedom of American citizens everywhere is under threat right now because our systems of selecting our own leaders are at risk and being attacked by foreign adversaries and being assisted and welcomed by the commander in chief. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary position for the country to be in. And how on earth anyone who's elected by the people could stand, stand there, and especially in the position that Mitch McConnell is in as Senate Majority Leader, and not a support a bill that simply says if you're a candidate and a foreign adversary comes to you and, and offers assistance in your campaign, which is illegal, that you have to report that to law enforcement. How on earth could Mitch McConnell oppose that? It's just... Uh, it's it's inexplicable. There's there's no good reason for it. It's it's political corruption. Well, and you know, in, in an attempt to attempt to explain the inexplicable, let me give you uh, Michael Weiss two two pieces of data. One is Washington Post uh, writer Paul Waldman, who has a piece now that says Mitch McConnell is right. Secure open elections would elect more Democrats, and so this might be some of the reason why uh, Mitch McConnell doesn't want to act. So here are some things that in our system today are partisan in the sense that if we were to do them, they would advantage the Democratic Party over the Republican Party, securing our voting systems from 
foreign hacking, allowing every American to vote, making it e as easy as possible for Americans to vote, and ensuring that all votes count equally. So Mitch McConnell has a partisan reason to allow Russia back in. And now here is the person for whom Mitch McConnell works. Well, they work together to get judges on the court. Here's Donald Trump telling George Stephanopoulos what he would do if he was offered foreign help again. If somebody called from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. Do you want that kind of interference in our elections? It's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. So, Michael, why, since, you know, clearly Donald Trump wants foreign help and he would take it again, Norway, Russia, or whether it's Saudi Arabia or any other country that wants to help, those other countries know that, right? So do we now have a system where our elections are not just participated in by Americans, but by the whole world or whoever wants to have a, an advantage uh, policy-wise? Yeah, and I think the difficulty is once you allow a foreign country, particularly a hostile foreign country, into your democracy, they don't tend to leave. Uh, the Russians learned this trick very successfully in Europe over the last 15, 20 years, uh, where they've been able to manipulate the political systems, buy off politicians, and indeed wage cyber campaigns and active measures. But look, I think with Mitch McConnell, this is a very simple case of somebody who's just putting party political interests above national security. This Senate Intelligence Committee report, which, by the way, it's a Republican-led committee, the baseline standard, they said, for protecting the election is to have the, the paper ballot backup system, the baseline standard. How is that a partisan issue? That's just something that every state ought to have to ensure that voting machines which might be compromised or voter registration data which has already been compromised. I mean, this is the most extraordinary disclosure in this report. Sixteen states have been hacked or targeted by the GRU, Russia's military intelligence agency, the same organization, mind you, that hacked the DNC and started passing information to WikiLeaks and DC Leaks. Sixteen states they've already penetrated. One of the states, Illinois, had 14 million voter registration uh, I'm sorry, registered voters, data from 14 million people, first and last names, home addresses, dates of birth, but also driver's license information. Remember what Robert Mueller found when he indicted the Internet Research Agency or the so-called St. Petersburg Troll Farm? The Russians were also doing identity theft to try and pass themselves off as Americans in order to, to keep this masquerade or this pantomime going, that this is just a domestic political uh, crisis or a domestic political development that the, the Russians have nothing to do with it. We are allowing them back into our system. And so for a Republican-led committee to say the very least we could do you know, make sure voter, voting machines don't have access to the Internet so they can't be hacked. Make sure they don't have exposed USB drives so somebody couldn't walk into a booth, put in a thumb drive and upload malware. Just remember, Joy, one voting machine that's compromised and proven to be so will cause a sociopolitical crisis, particularly in 2020, particularly with a president who has already alleged in 2016, an election he won, that the votes were rigged yeah. without any evidence. Right? Yeah. That's the danger. The Russians don't have to do very much to completely blow up the entire system. Right. And, and so for, for Mitch McConnell, Evan, apparently it, it is worth it to him to have those risks on the table if they win. Yeah, look, I think you, you're exactly right in explaining why Mitch McConnell is doing what he's doing. And, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm so discouraged and, and disappointed and as a conservative to see the Republican Party uh, now sacrifice our system of self-rule so that they can maintain an advantage at a time when they're struggling in the battle of ideas in the country. And I say to my fellow conservatives, you know, this isn't the way to fight. Let's, let's re-enter the battle of ideas. Let's, uh, let's compete. We believe or we used to believe in competition. Let's not abandon that politically. It doesn't make for a strong party. It doesn't make for a strong country. And, and that's, but that's what, that's what Mitch McConnell is doing, sadly, and what many Republicans are going along with. And it's just the wrong way. It's the wrong way for the party. It's the wrong way for the conservative movement. It's the wrong way for the country. And Michael is pointing out something that's also very important about what will happen if there is hacking again. And there certainly will be in 2020. I don't believe that we can say anymore, and it's uncomfortable, that we had a free and fair election in 2016 in America. Think about about that, the gravity of that. But I, I, I think that, you know, the American people can look past that. We can move beyond it if it just happens once and in the next cycle we have an election without these irregularities and so on. But if what happens in 2016 or more or something different but also a foreign attack on our democracy happens again in 2020, 
we are facing a situation in our country where our elections no longer will have popular legitimacy. Yeah. And in that scenario, we lose control and we are not we are no longer free. And that that's what's on the verge of happening. The, the Russians don't have to change votes to do that. All they have to do is to attack, uh, hack the voter rolls again. Maybe they do it a little bit deeper, a little more widespread this time. Then all of a sudden state governments can't certify the results of election. That would make Donald Trump very happy if all of a sudden everything was just inconclusive. Yeah, that's you know, that's that that happens elsewhere in the world where foreign adversaries to democracy or, or, or domestic enemies of democracy uh, try to dismantle it. And, and that's what we're facing now in the, in the country. Yeah, and just to build on that a little bit, Michael Weiss, what are some of the other worst case scenarios? I mean, I, I was talking earlier, did an interview earlier in which, you know, the idea that Donald Trump suddenly wins Vermont or, and then the yeah. Vermont government is saying, wait, hold on a second, Donald Trump can't win, have won Vermont. And then that's what people think. And then they can't certify. Do, do, the, do the Russians actually have to change votes? Do they have to just scare people? Or could it be actual disenfranchisement? deleting people from the voter rolls. Give us the worst case scenarios. Changing votes is actually quite hard to do, but they, again, they don't have to do that. They just have to, to compromise or vitiate the, the election itself by uh, penetrating the, the, the election infrastructure, manipulating data. You know, for instance, one worst case scenario, which was already war gamed by the United States is, what if they go in and, you know, you, Joy Reid, they find your home address and they change the, the home address wherever you're registered to vote, I assume New York. You turn up to the, the voting booth, the, the, the polling place, with the wrong address. Mm -hmm. You might get a provisional ballot, but this is going to cause chaos. It's going to cause a crisis where people are saying, well, wait a minute, this is where I live. What are you telling me that this is not where I, th that this is not my home address? So again, they don't have to even change, you know, check marks against Donald Trump's name versus whoever the Democratic candidate is going to be. There's a, a host of other things they can do. One just final point, you know, Mitch McConnell and the Republicans, I think they, they believe they're picking up a very powerful stick to bash the Democrats over the head with in 2020. What they're actually doing, though, is picking up a boomerang, because it's not just the Russians that are going to start futzing with American democracy. The Iranians might decide one day, we don't quite like this sanctions regime that this president imposed on our economy. Why don't we start hacking the emails of Republican chiefs of staff or Republican senators or Republican congressmen? You know, one of these bills was meant to protect all legislators from, from yep. uh, cyber intrusion. If they do that, then won't the Republicans look silly for saying, well, you know, we had the opportunity to indemnify ourselves and we chose not to? Yeah, absolutely. Or the question of Donald Trump's legitimacy will become even bleaker after an election that people wonder whether it was free and fair. So for himself, he might want to get on board with protecting his country. Um, Evan McMullen, Michael Weiss, thank you both very much. Thank you. It was watching that that got me very alarmed and got me into organizing this. And then uh, since then I've been catching up. I've been spending most of my time studying and teaching other things in health and uh, you know other topics. But I have here the redacted report from the Senate. And I, I want you to know when it's a Republican-led Senate that they put two years into this. <clears throat> that recommends paper ballots and recommends no internet access. And then when states keep on not doing some paper ballots in some states and also, uh, uh, you know, uh, continue with internet access, and I believe, John, you're going to have some pictures of some of those modems, I just feel really profoundly concerned. And, and this was one Republican that was talking that was concerned as well. And I'd like to, uh, so anyway, I have a brief PowerPoint I want to show. Uh, Mitch McConnell, just to let you know, was receiving checks from voting machine companies to support him in saying no to election integrity legislation on the very day that he said no. All right, and that was ESNS and Dominion. And they also contributed very heavily to his election campaign, as did two other, um, other uh, um, election vending companies. So um, I, I just want to say something that we've all said for a long time. The election companies, the, the ones that make the voting machine companies, are very actively involved in deciding who's going to win and in what way. 
all right? And uh, it's not just the Russians. <laughs> the Russians are trying to have an effect also, but um, it's our insiders that are running our election, election uh, systems that can be really problematic. So the conclusions from the 70-page report, we've said that already. It's, uh, they don't want any internet access. They want all paper ballots to be used in the election. Uh, the, um, the risks that the states will not be able to verify the elections and also that people will not have trust in election results, which is said in that MSNBC video, and also that the winners won't have the trust of the American people. So we will create a true chaos uh, that was similar to what happened with the USSR when it broke apart as well. You know, so this is really problematic. And uh, I want to say when I was reading this, they went into a lot of detail. Uh, they had uh, people from uh, registrars and, and State Department officials from all over the country presenting. Haldeman and other election integrity uh, experts talked to this Senate committee and presented on everything. And, and uh, they, you know, they were pretty shocked with, with the vulnerabilities as a Republican-led committee, okay? And uh, one of the things that I noticed in the public report, which is uh, uh, heavily redacted in some places, is huh. they were protecting, they, they were blocking out states that had had problems, um, uh, um, voting machine companies that were pe penetrated, uh, just uh, different things they were protecting uh, those companies, you know, by, and, and they, they didn't even mention the names of the states, they numbered the states, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, up through 20. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't make me feel good either, because this is a government not showing any degree of transparency. Okay, so just a little bit more here. Um, uh, and as I said, uh, this is um, Wyden who, who put in an opinion statement at the end. It's unconscionable for Republicans to stick their heads in the sand and do nothing after what happened in 2016. If Congress doesn't act, it's only a matter of time before hackers successfully interfere again. And uh, the bills that were uh, forbidden to be discussed in the Senate, one was Chuck Schumer, a 70, $775 million bill to bol bolster election security and require states to keep paper trails. And another one was to require a political candidate, their staff or family members to report if they received offers of assistance from a foreign government. So I mentioned that the, he had been accepting, um, you know, contributions. And then I just wanted to mention that in 2016, um, their VR Systems is a, an election voting company, and they were hacked in 2016. They say now that they weren't, but uh, they were, and many people, you know, the easiest way to hack an election system is to screw up the database so that people will end up uh, not seeing, not being able to vote where they normally vote. That there's a completely different address. And this happened all over the place in Florida, in the places that were interfered with. And Broward County, and in uh, Leon County, and a variety. And some couldn't even be found on the voter roll at all. They were just gone. So um, uh, this is a way of putting, uh, putting, um, votes aside that's been done for many years, and then also Bob at some point is gonna talk about purging. So, um, the, uh, uh, the database system of VR was penetrated by the Russians. And um, uh, Protect Our Elections knew about it even before it was revealed by this NSA person, Reality Win Winner, who's now in jail for having shared that information. 
So it's actually in 2018, 16 states used electronic voting machines with no paper tra trail. My further research, I, I changed that. And as uh, the lady said, uh, voting machines are not subject to federally mandated security standards. And there was a massive breach of voters in Illinois. So um, Morning Joe, uh, who I believe is a Republican, right? right? He's yeah. an independent now. Yeah. Oh, he's an independent? Oh, uh -huh. okay. Um, well, he he felt that, that Mitch McConnell is aiding and abetting Vladimir Putin. Many of us supporting that same thing. So Bill Reisner is going to talk about uh, uh, the overall situation and the context for 50 years of, of election manipulation. Uh, then John, Bricky, you're going to talk That's next right. about the, the importance of having paper ballots and, yeah. and ballot images. Is that correct? And a little more about what you know, yeah. a little more about what we can do to protect elections on a national level. Uh, in the last 16 months, I've been in 14 states, and we're building a system and trying to introduce a concept on we can make elections transparent, trackable, and publicly verified. Great, thank you. And he's he and Bill are with Audit AZ. Is no, USA. We used to be Audit, Audit AZ. Okay, Audit. We used to be Audit AZ, but uh, we started shifting about two years ago. We went national, and we started off with Bill sending me to Alabama. Okay. That was the first date. And then the next person we have talking is Bob Petrakis. No, it's no? Steve Rosenfeld, who oh, also, oh, okay. if I could say, is I've worked with, uh, I've known since Steve, since 2008. He is an excellent journalist who's really done tremendous work understanding the problems with elections and uh, and he has uh, just been out there another frontliner who's traveled the country and really gone into depth to look at the problems and uh, I consider him a good friend and he also plays a guitar like Eric Clapton too. I like that too. Great. All right and then we have after that we have Bob Fitrakis. Yes. Uh, from uh, the Free Press and from Trust Vote. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And he's going to talk about what happened in the 2016 election. And then we have uh, Jim Soper, who's going to talk about... I'm going to change it, so... Oh. Huh. Well, do you want to tell me so I can say it on the mic? <coughs> I'll probably put in some... Yeah, let's get going. Put in some uh, things of what I was going to say, but... I'm thinking here it may be more useful to talk about some of the new laws that have come into place in the past couple of years in California and what changes that's going to make for us. And there's some things that people should be going to their counties and talking to the counties and saying, what are you doing about this, this, and this. Great. And he's going to help prepare us to be even more informed as voters in our California election. So, yeah. I'd like to offer a framing comment. Of this um, conference started with this huge emphasis on the Russians, while everyone here who's worked in election integrity has known that it's been other the other party. It's been the Republicans. I, I feel it's it's both. Well, so. But my my point is that the huge focus at the opening of this conference on foreign interference, in my mind, is a distraction away from what we've seen from the very beginning, which is people are using elections to install their own people. Yeah, so what, what was important to me and what affected me was the fact that Mitch McConnell was uh, preventing election integrity legislation right and that was the emphasis yeah. you picked up on the Russian stuff especially I talked off the screen about uh, more Russian things but what I, I'm saying uh, is that what bothered me is that the election integrity legislation won't even be able to be discussed in the Senate 